in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, we are celebrating the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And the readings upon which we will be meditating invite us to meditate upon one of the most important and unescapable themes that we encounter every day in our society, in our families, in our churches, in our country, and in the world. The theme of forgiveness. And I would like us to meditate specifically on the theme. How difficult is it to ask for forgiveness or to forgive? My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, one of the modalities of love is forgiveness. And its toughest and most difficult point is forgiveness. We see in our societies most people are being wounded. Families are broken. The world is going apart because of lack of forgiveness. People in the offices, in the houses, in the families, in the societies, in the clans, they don't talk to each other because they lack forgiveness, the key to forgiveness. We see in the first reading, we are being reminded of what the people used to do to God and God forgave them. And that's why we see also in the second reading, St. Paul emphasizes on who wants to belong to God. How should that person be like? If we live, we live for God. If we die, we die for God. Meaning that in everything we do, we belong to God. We should be ready to be Christ-like. Because Christ is the real image of God. He is the revelation of God. And what did Christ do that we should be like him? We should be ready to forgive everyone that who sins against us. Because Christ was crucified on the cross. And he prayed for his persecuted and his accusers and those who crucified him. He said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Forgive them. And we should be ready to pray for everyone who offends us, who trespasses against us. Father, forgive him or her because she or he does not know what he is doing. Maybe their conscience is dead. Maybe their conscience is corrupted. Forgive him and grant him the graces to be able to recognize that and follow the right path. That should be our prayer. Not to pray for them to fall, to die. No. Jesus never said, Father, kill them because they have sinned against me. No. And we see also in the in the gospel reading, one of the most striking things is when Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Master, how many times should I forgive my brother who sins against me? Seven times? Jesus told him, no. Seven times is not enough because you might finish the seven times the same day. Because we sin every day, we sin many times. But Jesus says, forgive that person seven times, 70 times. And we see also in some translations of the Bible, he says 77 times, but seven times 70. And when we look in the original version, that's what it means. And when we do calculation, seven times 70, it gives us 490. And even if we keep the other one also 77 times, in the Middle East expression, it means always. That means we should be ready to always forgive anyone who sins against us. And that's the meaning. Are you ready to forgive everyone who has been being a thorn in your bone, in your, in your body? Are you ready to forgive? We should not count. I have, he has done this for me. She has done, been doing this. I should not forgive. I may I cannot allow it to go. If you say I will not forgive, I will not even accept the forgiveness. I will not go to ask for forgiveness. You are proud and the kingdom of God does not belong to you. So we should be ready to open up, to follow Christ. We need only one key, humiliation, humility. Humility is very important to be able to accept forgiveness and to ask for forgiveness. It's very important to know that we are frail. We sin every day and God forgives us. And we should be ready to forgive other people. As also the prayer of Pater Nosia, the our father that we see in Matthew chapter 6, verse 12 to 14. After that, we see that forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. So it's a condition for us to forgive others in order to be forgiven. The more you forgive, the more you are forgiven. So my dear brothers and sisters, we should also know that there are one of the points. When we refuse to forgive, we put ourselves in prison. It's a prison and we have the key of that prison we refuse to jump out from. We end up suffering. So when you forgive, you come out of the prison and you are a prisoner. 
Because when we refuse to forgive, what happens to us is that we keep the person in the heart which is very small and that heart cannot supply blood well to the body. We end up having diseases like uh, a high blood pressure, for example, and uh, very bad nights because a sleepless night because we think of other people and we end up dying very early. And that's why we see that anger, hatred, unforgiveness, they are poisons that we drink. When you drink them, don't expect the other person to die on your behalf, no? When you drink poison, die yourself. That's what they create in our bodies. So we should be ready also to know that if we are ready to forgive, that means we love the person. We cannot love without forgiving and we cannot forgive without love. The two are, they work together. And it's very important, they work together. Another saying also is that the weak cannot forgive. Forgiveness is the attribute of the strong. That's one of the quotes, the quote of forgiveness. That means if you are not ready to forgive, know that you are very weak. You are very weak. Forgiveness belongs to the strong. If you want to be strong, you want to be Christ-like, you want to be a model in the society, be ready to forgive. And forgiveness is victory. When you forgive, you have victory. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, let us be ready to open ourselves for the Holy Spirit to guide us, to be able to embrace all situations with love in order to be able to forgive and also to accept other people to ask us forgiveness and also open ourselves to go to other people to ask for forgiveness. Forgiving is not becoming weak, but becoming strong. That's one point I want to emphasize on. Refusing to forgive is remaining in the prison. And when you remain in the prison, know that you are, have the keys of that prison. And when you want to come out from that prison, open and jump out. Forgive so that you don't die early and you may live. You may give hope to other people. May Almighty God bless us and grace us the graces that we need in order to be able to forgive other people who sin against us, to accept the forgiveness that they request from us, to be able also to ask from other peoples. And may Almighty God bless us. You, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and witness the gospel value by your lives by being ready to forgive other people and accept their forgiveness in order to build a society full of love and peace.